I'm Dave Palumbo, founder of Species Nutrition. From my earliest bodybuilding days, I believed in only putting the best in my body. And that lives on in the Species Nutrition line of products. I put my name and reputation on every bottle of Species Nutrition products. If you want to be your absolute best, join the evolution. Welcome back to another edition of After Hours. We got a busy show today, so we're going to snap right to it. I know we got John Romano with us, Mr. G, uh, Greg Valentino. What's up, guys? I see you're, uh, you all have big uh, pictures of something to drink. What are you drinking there? We're drinking okay. Amino Evolve. Yes. Spe- right. Species <laughs> Amino Evolve. Oh, you got the iced tea? I got the, I got the iced tea and I got the... Uh... Strawberry got, watermelon. Yeah. That's what I got. The Great. iced tea and strawberry watermelon. You I like can't it? wait till the end of the week when I'm really big. This is going to be amazing. <laughs> that's a, I feel pumped from taking <laughs> it's I a I was, yesterday with this shit, man. When I was younger, I used to take like Bob Hoffman protein pills and shit. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> And then about fucking 20 minutes later, I'd run to the mirror and I'd look to see if it did anything. You know what I mean? Like I actually believe. I know. Do you guys like the flavors? Yeah, it's excellent. Yeah. To have aminos taste this good is incredible. Yeah, people hey. don't realize if you tasted the aminos within water without any flavoring system, you oh. you would not be able to drink it. It's it's battery acid. That's how bad it, it tastes is. Tastes like a rotten cow carcass. Yeah. Speaking so, of that, Dave, you should have had a milk flavored one, and then you could have bought a cookie from Mister Mister G <laughs> and dunked it, and that, you could have got protein with your amino. Well, that's your isolize. You use my way isolate. For that, you're not going to make aminos taste like milk, but you can make no, whey isolate taste like milk. I was like kidding. Milk. You know what? But the, 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 it's funny it that you mentioned our milk. Yeah, it's funny that you mentioned the taste, though. I'll tell you why, Greg. Because they do taste absolutely horrible when they're not flavored correctly. And, and a lot of the aminos on the market, and we use 100% fermented aminos, which means that they're not made from human hair that's digested. We act, they actually are fermented in, in, a, in a big vat so using bacteria to express the, the different amino acids. And then, we, and then they're isolated. But the, the key is trying to use a very sophisticated flavoring system to hide the taste of them. And that takes a lot of time. And John, you know I'm brutally honest. These companies will send me flavors. And I'm like, and I offend a lot of people because I'm like, these suck, you know. I don't even like say, well, they need to be tweaked. I'm like, these suck. Like, I don't even know how, <laughs> I wouldn't even send some of these samples out. I'd be embarrassed. And little by little, you know, if you offend people enough and their egos get involved, then they want to make you happy. And so slowly but surely, we tweaked it, tweaked it, tweaked it, and we finally got the, um, you know, this final outcome. I think, and someone else has told me this, this was not my words, that this tea, this lemon iced tea flavor is the best iced tea you can get anywhere. In any drink, with sugar or no That's sugar. Hands hey, down. what does it do for me? So not, I nothing, drink, so of course. Is- it's nothing. It doesn't do anything for you. That's it's just taste good. <laughs> no, it's it's essential amino acids. So it's all, all right, the essentials so, I in know, there. But I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to... You ever hear the expression "Why cut back"? That's. <laughs> we'll get so to it, that. So the, this is why drink regular water, right? You know. Well, let me ask you a question. Yeah. How, what do you mean it doesn't have human hair? You're saying like. If every time I eat my girlfriend's box and uh, I get a pubic hair, should I swallow that? Uh, Will I be getting a <laughs> Like, no. you know when you get swallow a hair? Them. Swallow no, as most many of them as you can. Most free-form aminos, what they do is they, they get the hair in the in the barbershops of China. Now, this is I'm not making this stuff up. 
and they, they, they digest it in a big vat of digestive enzymes. They isolate it, obviously. They get a little bit, there's no bacteria in there. Like that. And then they, they use those, the amino acid that from the, the hair digests, because hair is made up of a protein, obviously. And that's how they get the, the different amino acids for, in most, most cases in so most you, companies. Really? It's, so it's, you're saying I'm eating an Asian chick's hair most yeah, of the pretty time? Pretty much, yeah. If, if, you're I, using, if you're using anyone else's aminos, but we use fermented you're, you're, aminos. You're eating an Asian chick's box. Yes, oh, exactly. yes, it's a good out. <laughs> <laughs> I've been there. <laughs> so, I hate it. Wait a Hold on. Today, every all the chicks shave. Even my girlfriend, I fucking hate that. Yeah. But I like a 70s bush. I so know you, Mr. Like, G. Hey, you like you like to go to the jungle. You Mr. G loves that. I like I go. The, oh. the little triangle. Oh. The old fucking triangle. <laughs> yeah. I, you ever watch a porn? You, you want to watch like Linda Lovelace or something? Yeah. Well, by the way, I, my friend we used to bang her. She's from my town. I don't and, doubt that, Greg. <laughs> and, and, and she's fucking, she had that like hair patch there. I don't know. You you guys don't like that shit. You're not you're not down with that. The seventies Bush. Mister G I loves am. it. You like I it, Georgie? I lo yeah. I like the, yeah. I like the little I like the little I like the little Hitler thing in the top. That's exactly what my girlfriend does. The Hitler. That's the little Hitler thing. That's, yeah, that's Hitler. what the Oriental girl. That's how the Oriental girls are. They right. don't they can't grow hair. That's all they. I remember when I, when I was an Oriental girl. All she had was that little like. Yeah. Slanding. I think Oriental is yeah, an old yeah, term, George. Yeah, I think Lansing. it's Asian. I think that's the new term. Dude, my girlfriend's got to Hitler, so I feel like I'm fucking, you know, uh, I'm being like racist by eating it. But then again, she's fucking Mexican. I tell her, you're Mexican. Let that shit grow. Be natural. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you want to go down there? You go down there in a hot fucking day after she has after she's been in the uh, wherever. But uh, I've you know. been there, done it. You uh. know, it's like fucking. It's like hunting in the Amazon. You know what I mean? It's called hormones. We we we. <laughs> We're, they're not supposed Back to be perfume on. You know, guys, like, you know how like beards, like facial hair was out for a long time and now it's like back in like the big beards and stuff like that. You think that that same thing goes with like, you, you know, hair, pubic hair? Absolutely. So it they might come back these, in vogue. These two, these two love the 70s bush. I can't stand but they're all, well, But they're all, John. You know what? I'm talking about, you think new people will come out and say, oh, it's cool to have, you know, hair under your arms and hair <laughs> between some, them. I'm, some of them do, you know. Oh, yeah. Are you kidding me? The women's lib chicks, they fucking grow hair on their legs right now. To get, I'm, talk, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about, like, will that become the new in vogue thing to do? It Be is. It's, it it goes is. In out all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I see chicks with hairy armpits. I fucking hate hairy bushes. I can't stand yeah. them. Nah, yeah, me too. John, come on. You got to get back to our roots. Give me just that little teeny tiny Hitler thing about that big, and then that's good. Yeah. I, got the, I got the Hitler thing all I the time. Like, I, I don't like having a fucking... Get a machete out and fucking bash my way through the jungle down there. Wait a minute. What about when they get the little fucking fur, like the little happy trailer up the belly button? You know what I'm nah, talking about? I don't like that either. What? <laughs> now, what about guys? Should guys be clean guys shaven? Guys are supposed no. to have that. No, no, no. No. I'm talking about, you know when they get light little vet? No, I don't get any of that. My, my girlfriend's <clears throat> fucking Mexican. She's not a hairy Mexican. But, I mean, Jesus, I tell her, you can't even grow that fucking, grow the triangle, man. You know, she won't do it. She she has the Hitler. I don't What about don't men? Like you think men should have uh, any hair down there? Oh, well, I don't care if men have hair. I don't know. Ask the girls what they I know I'm saying. Do you, what do I mean, the girls talk about? I think I it's a guy they... thing. If a guy, you guys, you got to let the hair grow. I don't, you know, when you're a bodybuilder, you shave everything. But then right. you get yeah. all fucking, you know what I mean? You get oh. irritated. You try shaving you, you, down by your balls? I, 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 I tried doing it with those electric braces and they got caught. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. Oh. He slid open yeah. his scrotum, probably. Hey. Yeah. And, then, and, then, and then the metal. Mr. G's testicle is sticking out. <laughs> so you figured I might as well give myself a vasectomy while I'm at it. You know, I get the thing open. Oh. <laughs> oh, wait. Oh, 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 oh get, get that. Uh, where, they put, where they put the uh, paste on you? What is that called? Oh, no. The body wax. No way. Are you crazy? Oh, I thought that was just... I remember the first time I got it. Oh. My clients paid for me. I, get, I paid for body wax. I didn't know what it was. I'm like, oh, this is cool. They're going to put a little we, wax you on the candle wax. You gave me a great idea, George. I got a great oh. idea. We should pay to have Jimmy get a Brazilian... One of those Brazilian waxes down there and film the whole thing. But not Jimmy? really show. We don't want to show his, 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 his parts, but just show the expression on his face as they're ripping the hair out of his, like, you know. Uh, you mean a pubic. bull? 
Chicken and bowl. Yeah. He'll be I, was, your ass. He'd be, I was punching the walls. I'm like, I go, this is what girls do? <laughs> girls put this on their private parts? It's, it's, it's yeah. like ripping, it, ripping yeah, the hair right off. But they're not oh. as hairy as guys, so it don't hurt as much, I don't think. I don't well, know. well, what do you think is the best way to guys to get rid of hair as bodybuilders, uh, Greg? I mean, I I always just did the old shave thing. Me too. I would use nair on the legs to soften. I don't have real hairy. I'm not real hairy, so I'm lucky. Yeah. But, you know, I I always always say use nair and then fucking you know get the patches you miss with hair with the razor. What did you do? My my legs, if you put nair on it, would laugh at you. They'd be like, ha 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 ha. What, what is this? What is this like a moisturizing uh, treatment? <laughs> didn't work on me, you know. And I wasn't hairy. It just did the nair just didn't do anything. But the I, nair kind of melt the hair. The hair looks melty. Yeah, it doesn't do anything Wait. to me. Yeah. You know what though? I I, it worked on me, but you got to leave it on. You know what? It, because I also have like light hair. I, I wasn't very hairy, oh. but I got to tell you, when I when I'm jacked, uh, you know, I have really big legs, so my legs in in the creek, it would be hard, especially around the hamstrings where you got yeah. splits and shit. It's hard to get in there. You, you like you get patches in there or hair. You, you know right. what I'm talking about? Like you, they, you regular, can't reach. I hated regular, shaving, but I used to do regular it. Regular razor, you know? Craig. Would, What's would, that? You use a regular, a regular yeah, razor. Yeah, yeah, like a throwaway, a throwaway. Oh, I use the electric one. They have the electric ones now. You can use. Yeah, but they're not. A, they're not. A, I don't know. I don't feel like a, a, a electric razor is as good as the throwaway. I razor. found I got ingrown hairs when I used electric razors. I, I well, found when it, I used the the regular razor, I kind of exfoliated. It exfoliated the skin. I think it was less likely to get ingrown hairs. I'm the exact opposite. I if I use the blade, I get ingrown hairs. If I use the buzzer, I I'm fine. Really interesting. Yep. Hmm. You know what though? It would have been because we're all sixty years old, except Dave's still the kid in the group. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> you know, as you get older, you don't have much. Like I, I could walk around right now. I mean, I could probably, if I was going in a bodybuilding show, I wouldn't really have much any kind of sh shaving to do because I, lo I don't have as much hair on my legs I'm, as I did. I still have I hair. I don't young. know why. Still growing. Well, I, I, I lost it. Other than on my head, my facial hair got, got lost too. I had really? big patches here were bald. I was. I used to have a. Fuller beard than Big Lenny. Wow. Do you, but if you had, do you have the Is amount of hair on your legs, like especially around from the knees down, calves. Is it? Do you nah, have the, I have very little hair on my legs. Me too. Me too. Really? I never have to shave. Never. Really? Very I little. Don't know if I, I have shave any every day. I'm very manly. <laughs> 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 I grow a lot of hair. Well, you wear shorts all the time. Remember? I, I, well, what does that have to do with me growing hair on my face? <laughs> right, you, Dave, you, could you grow one of those fucking, like, you know, yeah. 1800, I call them Civil a War. Absolutely. Beards. My wife hates facial hair, hair in general, so yeah, I wouldn't do it. But yeah, I could definitely grow. Matter of fact, and if you remember back in the day, Aaron Singerman and I had a, a beard growing contest, and I actually, he thought he had, because he's a hairy guy, and I beat him. My, my uh, facial hair was grew thick very quickly. So you could grow one of those. My father grow, used to grow beards all the time. He was like, yeah, the, the king of beard. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, hair is good. Do we have Big Lenny there? Is he on the line? Hey, how you doing? Oh, what's up, oh, Lenny? Shit. Hey, Lenny. Hey, Lenny's got a great doing? beard. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with John. I use the electric and then the maintain it with the blade. Yeah. yeah. But in Florida, you pretty much have to shave. I mean, it's five or ten degrees cooler without it. And I would do it regardless. Right. You know, I always maintain, except for my face, which doesn't bother me for the heat. But, you know, I get that hair on my upper back and shoulders. That's a good five or ten extra degrees down there. And yep. Not in this Lenny, uh, but, do you like wait, your women? Wait, Lenny, Lenny, do you like the 70s bush or do you like the fucking uh, landing strip? Well, I originally saw 70s bush because I had a babysitter who was Italian. <laughs> who we were outside in the daytime. We were playing out in the mud. And she took... We all went in the sh uh, shower together. That's with the, the babysitter? Went up close. I was at eye level with that bush. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Lenny, you he went was, in the what, shower the with the babysitter? <laughs> yeah. One particular day. Not too often. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that you did it once, that's a score. Of, uh, it was her idea because we were all covered in mud. We were laughing out playing, and she thought nothing of it. Stripped us all naked, including herself. Oh. Wow. Well, you put some she age was in your age. She was gorgeous. You got, but you the bush some... was gigantic. Wow. Wait, you got to put some ages in here, Lenny, because yeah. you know, it's, it's a different yeah, I mean, when you were nine. I was about six. Like... 
And she was in her early 20s. Oh! <laughs> Letty, you could have... <laughs> That's like a movie. That's like a scene out of a movie. Like, you're like, holy mackerel. This is it's my like, dream come true. Too. But wait, Lenny, did that subliminally set you up for like when you're older, you know, now, like, there's something about a bush that I really like. Because I like the bush, eh, Lenny, to be honest yeah, with I you. I saw that before. I'd seen, you know, little girls, they didn't have anything. And then I would ask yeah, my, my mother the next day, I says, the so-and-so has uh, all this hair right here. And, and my mother said, what? And she's like asking me questions. And that's the last time we saw that babysitter. I can imagine. <laughs> Dude, oh my God! Lenny Wait, could have been getting like, blowjobs and stuff like that if he would not have told his mother about it. <laughs> imagine what he had, imagine what he had coming. Yeah. Oh my God! Wait, when I was you blew it, Lenny. Old, hey, when I was 13 years old, I used to date a girl that I went to school with. She was my girlfriend, and we would go to the lake to go swimming. And she would have all I could see the hair coming out of the side of the bathing suit, <laughs> and that used to give me wood all the time. <laughs> Yeah, hair. Uh, no one had because at the time, that was as close as you were ever going to yeah, get. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. No, I had that shit later on. I had that. that Lenny, was later on. Lenny almost later had on. a like uh, almost had a scene out of uh, Fast Times at Ridgemont High there. You know, holy yeah, man. I loved it. To this day, I like the uh, Caribbean women down here. They don't shave. They got some. It's just you know something different. And <laughs> to me, sex should be a little nasty. So <laughs> me too. Lenny, so at so nine years old, was in the shower like the with bush. a twenty-something-year-old. Oh my god! Yeah, sh a shaved beaver is is like with a little girl. It looks like to me. It, it reminds me of I agree. A little girl. I can't. It's like be with a little. I mean, I can't even think. Dude, of God it. put hair on there for a reason. That's yeah, yeah. Like so you can shave it, it with an axe. <laughs> no, shape it. To shape it. That's what he. Well, god. men should shave because it makes their dick look bigger. There you That's go. True, Tips from Big Lenny on how to make your penis look appear bigger. Well, Lenny, so you, you agree with me then that you, you're a bush man, right? Except Ooh. with the transsexuals. I don't want any of that shit. Oh. <laughs> That's a little too close for comfort. Oh. <laughs> it's a little too close Wait, to Greg's yeah. heart. Look, yeah. As he says that, look behind him. He's got, he's got that cross, Jesus cross behind him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Greg, so you, let, you let the fucking... You let the transsexuals grow hair around your asshole, and it's uh, like a <laughs> Greg, d Greg, did the tra did the tranny shave completely? Well, yeah, most, yeah, definitely. I don't, I never saw one without. Greg, one. what about the hot ones that you saw at the Sound Factory? Oh, those girls. I, I mean, they probably all were shaved. Those girls, you know, those girls were more feminine, had big tits, everything. Right. Bro. right. You would never fucking know. My God, you. I know. My friend, we were at a after hours club, and and. One of them was going up to my friend, and my friend was out of it. I go, listen. I told my friend, I go, that's a, that's a guy. Right? And I went, to the, I went to the guy. I go, listen. Stop fucking with my friend. He thinks you're a fucking girl. You got it? Right? And then about a half hour later, he's making out in the corner. <laughs> Your friend was pissed at you. You almost fucked it up for me. I got to interrupt you, Greg, for a second. My friend Tom Okerman, he has a, 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 a massage... Uh, business. It's called the uh, Muscle Mechanic, and he sent me a bunch of stuff. He sent me some straps. Uh, GSD, get shit done. Okay, so these are my straps. I want to just say thank him. But the sweatshirt's awesome. Really love this sweatshirt. Right here. You know, I got to make a new rule on Look this show. Look at that. That's right? a cool sweatshirt, right? I don't really. I'm Wait. not a red guy, but that that's really cool. That's a cool. John's design. gonna say if you don't have one for the whole class, you don't give it to the. I'll get you guys. Yeah. Right. Why, why like, are um, we sitting here? Why are we sitting here while you plug somebody else? And we got Jack. Well, I got. Right. I got to showcase it first, then I get them to send it to you too. Yeah, because you guys. Nobody. I'm still waiting for those fucking pop tarts from last year. I never. You had. haven't got pop tarts. You're the right. only one. What all do right. you do? I'll get the pop tarts for you. <laughs> now, now you're plugging all this shit. We're standing here fucking on our phone. Yeah, you remember well, you're plugging it. We don't get nothing. Oh, so, we got the but we got the aminos. Yeah, you got the aminos. <laughs> Stop complaining. Hey, hey, hey. Stop complaining. Hey, 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 people. That's why. John, you gotta you see this guy. Give so, me a free fucking plug. I'm not saying Valentino and Mr. G and Romano and Big Lenny sit there fucking twiddling their thumbs, <laughs> drinking my free shit while while you plug theirs. It ain't happening. Look, I gotta just show you this one. I gotta show you this one. You don't have one for the whole class. You don't have. You don't you give gum to the whole class. You don't give <laughs> gum to the whole class. <laughs> exactly. Um, 
I remember that. Yeah, but the teachers would go crazy. Like, yeah, if you didn't have gum in all the glasses, you put it away. All right. I, so I got this other one, this ice shaker. John, this this shaker bottle came. You know, they put species on it. It looks really nice, right? It, uh, I mean, this is really yeah, it high really end. Really nice. I wouldn't mind having this one. thing. <laughs> my son, my son hit me with this thing. He almost knocked me unconscious with it. it, it <laughs> this is a metal. This thing. It's not plastic. I said you can't hit people. I taught him a word now that he got he run away with. I said you don't cheap shot people, you know. So now he cheap thinks shot. it's funny. He thinks like cheap shotting is cool. I'm like, no, that's not cool. You don't hit people when they're not looking. I said with anything. You hear this? I hit it again. Wow. That's you know, what hit you know my what head. You know what fixes that, Greg? You know what fixes that, Dave? What? You give him a cheap shot. I have. No, he, you, he thinks it's funny. No, you, you know how you fix that, Dave? You give that to your daughter, and yeah. then you, and you <laughs> let her hit him in the head with it. The funny and thing is, he likes violence. Like, like, like I'll, I'll shove him, or I'll. He, does, he thinks it's funny. He thinks it's hysterically funny. Yeah, like, he's, a, he's a boy. What do you I expect? know. I, what we do? He's supposed to do that. I That's know. Right. I, I know that. I, for, I forgot hey, what I was gotta, like. you got to think back and remember to how things used to be. Let him watch the Three Stooges. My father says go. to me, my father <laughs> yeah. tells me, like, when I was a kid, yeah. this is years ago, <laughs> that he, in order for me to go to sleep at night, he'd have to, like, fight me, wrestle with me. And I didn't understand what he was talking about. Now I get it. My kid is the same way. He needs to be, <laughs> he wants to box. He wants to, like, you know, he wants to be body slammed. You know, it's crazy how, you know, the, the, you know, boys are so, like, aggressive, you know. What about Wait, throwing him in the start. pool? What? What about throwing him in the pool? They love that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the more violent you are with him, the better it is. Like, he thinks it's, it's the coolest thing of all time, you know. <laughs> anyway, all right. I gotta get. To, I got something so funny for you. Like I told you guys, like I think last week, Ron Harris at MD. I don't even want to give them the hits because you know what? They're gonna get so many hits after I talk about this because it's so funny. But you know what? It's fine. I don't. I don't mind. Wait, I, I'm, no, I'm, fix it. Put it on. Put it on our site. I'm feeling very generous right now. So Ron yeah. Harris for his hundredth uh, uh, interview, you know, edition interviewed Who is Steve Black. Let me let me let that? me set this up. Hold on. Let me set this up, Mr. G. Ron Harris interviews Steve Blackman. Okay, we invited him on here. He obviously declined. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't think he'd ever come on here. So Steve Blackman goes on there, and for some reason, Dr. George Tuliatos is on the show too. And George doesn't say. And I like George. You know, we all get along with George. I've yeah, had him on George a million times. Great. Why George is on this show with Blackman at the same time? I, maybe moral support. I don't know what it is. But George doesn't say three words the whole time. As a matter of fact, at some point, I think he's falling asleep in the interview. And I think that Ron Harris might be falling asleep too, but the funny thing is, I, I, I didn't watch the whole thing yet, but there's one part I gotta play for you guys, because it's hysterical. And I'll probably be the only person to find the interview even interesting, because I know we know Blackman so well, but this is so funny. It's Blackman giving his advice on how the future generation of bodybuilders are gonna build mass, because he, he basically says that, you know, Ronnie Coleman, uh, he, you know, he's got injuries from pushing a hard, a heavy duty, high intensity, the, the trick is, well, play the clip, Tyler. It speaks for itself. Let him, let him yeah. yeah. Volume <clears throat> training is what creates muscle hypertrophy the best. <laughs> Not even failure training, it's volume. And bodybuilders have known this for years. Why do they train two body parts a day, two sessions a day? Look at Arnold, the, the volume train that he did back then. Volume training has proven itself to work. But the key of training of the future is not getting under a barbell with 750 pounds, okay, like Ronnie did. Okay, that's not going to create longevity in the sport. You got to train. Ronnie only won the Olympias, yeah. Uh, to have longevity. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you need the drive mentally, but uh, also. Um, I believe that the, the future with the uh, chemical enhancement, hmm. I think you're going to see in the next few years. George is sleeping right now. Look. Really incredible changes in the pharmaceutical industry. There's a category of drug development right now. They're called sarcopenia drugs. <laughs> All right, stop this for a second. These we'll, are, come back like, this. we'll come back. Sarcopenia. <laughs> he goes, he starts off by saying that, you know, right. The, 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 the guys that train the heaviest in the history of sport, Ronnie and, and Dorian, who've had 15 Olympias between each other, they have no longevity, which is ridiculous, right? <laughs> <laughs> but 
Vol- it's volume. He must have read an article yesterday on volume trading, right, John? Well, wait, but wait a minute. You got to back up because before he had Menser on staff talking about heavy duty right, one right, set right. training. Yeah, high intensity. High, yeah. One set, you go home. High intensity. <laughs> That's the future of bodybuilding. <laughs> these volume guys are crazy. They're crazy. These volume guys. They work out three times a day. They don't have to, one set. One set, you go home. Rest. Now, now he's volume. Now yeah, he's yeah. talking about Ron. Yeah. <laughs> the secret. That's the trick. The secret. Yeah, but I kind of agree with no, him. Wait, wait, wait. Even better. The future of bodybuilding yeah. is what they've been doing since Milo of Croton 6,000 years ago. <laughs> but I kind of agree with him, though. He's well, that's your, that was your method of training. But, but the, the most popular. I train like that. The guys and, who, and when- who were the most successful, however, didn't do volume training, you know? Right. Yeah, but the thing is, though, they're all loaded. Look at fucking dude. Dorian Yates looks like a fucking old man. And he is an old man. Than me. Sixty. And he, I, he, no, I think he's fifty-nine. But I know I'm older than him. If he turns sixty, it's after I turn sixty. Anyway, he fucking. He, look how injured he is. He's got all these injuries. He won six Olympias, uh, Greg. Who cares? That's he only, he only tore his tricep. He's not injured. He oh, tore he his bike. bicep. He tore, he tore a bunch of shit. I Look, he, we I know. Bike, we does mountain biking and stuff now, and all sorts of like. Uh, tore a lot too. Dorian, Listen, Dorian. I'm not putting Dorian down. I'm just saying. First of all, but his me. point. His point is ridiculous because yeah. show show me a 90 year old guy that looks like he did when he was 20 because he's volume training. I, I understand that. Stupid. But I They're, think that you can't train. I think what he's trying to say. And you know I like Blackman still. I I get along with him. I think it and it's it's got none of it because it's him. But I've been doing volume training my whole life. That so like George Mahalik, you know the the fucking intensity or insanity. I love that shit. And I still do it now, and I'm older. But the thing is, is he he's saying that those guys now are almost fucking wheelchair bound. You know what I'm saying? Ronnie is, and I love Ronnie. It's just that. Eventually, all that heavyweights. Well, that's why powerlifters don't have Greg, that fucking longevity. But Ronnie did volume training. Ro- Ronnie didn't Ronnie. do high intensity training. No, I know volume that. Training. But the one thing that Ronnie did was what people don't heavy, have. I've said this stuff. a million times. When you see Ronnie Coleman, T. Bar Rowan, four hundred pounds. Okay, and I've been in a gym. We, you know, he has those strong and shapely gyms and uh, dumbbells and Bob Bonham's gym. They're like two hundred fucking sixty-five pounds each. I've been there. And I've seen him train a million times. He gets reps with that shit. Yeah. So for him, it's not heavy. Right. I tell you, you see him T-bar row, 400 pounds, 450, T-bar row, but he's getting fucking 12 to 14 reps. It's heavy for me, but it ain't heavy for him. I'm just saying, I understand what Steve's trying to say, but I also, I, I disagree with the part that, I believe that everybody's different. So what works for one guy is not No, you're right. You're 100% right. But for most people, if you want to have massive amounts of muscle on your body, and that's your goal, I'm not saying it's necessarily good for your body long term. That's what you got to do to build the muscle. You got to lift heavy weights. You, There's you, no, you, you can't do 100 understand. sets and what, compensate what, for, what, for, for lifting you know, light. You know? What Blackman doesn't understand is, is that... Muscle growth, hypertrophy, not hyperplasia, hypertrophy, <laughs> is, that is, a, that is a, a adaptive response to stress. It's right. basically, building muscle is basically a survival mechanism. Right. You are, the way your body perceives the lack of muscle is by the amount of work it's being subjected or, or being expected to perform and if you force it to do what it cannot do, it will adapt right. by building more muscle. That's right. the whole premise. Yeah. It doesn't build muscle for any other reason. Yep. Not because you want 20-inch biceps or because <laughs> your one guy's training volume and the other guy's training intensity. It's got nothing to do with it. What it has to do with is does the body perceive an inequity, an, an, a, 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 inadequacy? A, 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 an inability to perform what's being ex, what's it's being forced to do, and the adaptive response to save the life of the human is to build more muscle. That's what it does. So volume, intensity, none of that shit matters. What matters is can you get to the body to perceive the point where it is inadequate? 
with its current musculature. If you can do that, you're going to build muscle. The, I the, agree 100%. At, the, but, but everybody is different. Like yeah. Arnold said, he tried the heavy duty and he fucking got smaller and smoother. Mike Mentzer's heavy duty. People talk about that shit. I knew Mike Mentzer. Mike Mentzer was in my gym right here where I live, okay? And we actually had an argument about this because he used to tell me if you're doing all those sets, the intensity and sanity, then you, you could be doing more. Uh, you're holding back. And I said, no, I'm not holding back because I still train to failure. I cut my rest period. But here's the thing. The true heavy duty, most of these fucking people watching this will have no idea what it is. Doreen Yates... Mike Mentzer would take one set and would it would take them five minutes to complete one set. They would start off until they could till they failed, then peel the weight off and can, the set would continue, then peel the weight off and negatives and positives and negatives and positives, then peel more weight off to, to total momentary failure. That's the key. I, the guy who owned the first gym that I ever trained at, who taught me, his name was Bob Biff, was a disciple of Arthur Jones. He opened up a Nautilus Center, and they allowed you to do one set. I don't know if you remember that. One <laughs> no. set on a Nautilus machine. You weren't allowed to do two. And he would put you through one set. You would want to vomit. You didn't even want to train with him. Because I, tra I trained with Mensur a bunch of times, and I swear to God, I thought I was going to die. Yeah, I'm I, telling you. Most I, people, when you say high intensity, most people have no fucking clue what that means. I tell it, John. Uh, you, the people don't know that. They think heavy duty means take a fucking heavy weight, do six reps with it, and put it down. I'm training heavy duty. That right. is not heavy duty. Those fuck, I'm telling you, I've trained with Mitch in my fucking gym. He would argue with me, right. Mike. I yeah. knew Ray, who was fucking way out there. But, uh, it, you know, I'm telling you. And then Mike Mentzer would go smoke a cigarette after the work. <laughs> but, um, Here, you know, but here's the issue, Greg. I, I always say that the, the, the truth, okay, so to speak, lies somewhere in the middle, always. So yeah. you have the extreme volume trainers who... If you're genetically gifted in, in building muscle, it will work for them, okay? You have your guys who do the Menser, Dorian, and Dorian didn't always do this. He, he progressed to that because he, he wanted to keep getting less and less and less to see if he can still extract more out of his body. So it was more of an experiment for him. I think that's too extreme too. But what I found was that by reducing volume, not worrying about doing four sets, six exercises, by reducing volume and raising the weight, Okay, so in other words, I can do more now because I'm not worried about as much volume. I can focus better on fewer sets. Rather than doing 18 sets, I'm doing six to eight sets. I found that that was, enabled me to grow because I can, I can lift heavier and I can be more intense mentally because you can't be intense with 25 sets. There's no way you're going to give the same intensity to all 25 sets. I don't, uh, care, what that's it, not I don't care what anyone says. And you, you can't lift this, you cannot, like about you that. Cannot lift this heavier that. weight. So no, you can't, you, hold part, on, you can't compensate, okay, by activating more muscle fibers by doing more volume. So at some point, if you want to get bigger, you're going to have to raise the weight to activate more fiber involvement so that you're breaking down more fibers, not the same fibers over and over again. And that's where I think the truth lies somewhere in the middle where you're lifting heavy enough weights to challenge the muscle and activate more muscle fibers, but not doing Dave, too much volume where you can't recover. Dave, listen yeah. to me. You could get away with saying that, but the, the fucking momos that watch this shit and hear yeah. that, they don't, they don't have... Listen, can I, let me explain what Dave is trying to say, you fucking guys. And I understand. When Dave says lift a heavier weight, he's talking about a weight that he can handle. Right, he doesn't right. mean like 90% of the guys, Dave, that go to the gym right. are going to put too heavy of a weight yep. that they they think, well, Dave says lift heavy, so they're going to go there yeah. and they're going to use weights they have no business using. You're right. They're going to squat either to a bench or they're going to squat <laughs> doing these half squats like that. Right. And then it, because they think because they got 10 plates on each side or yeah. do leg presses where the legs barely move down like this with fucking 15 plates. That's not heavy duty. You're right. You're talking about, dude, you're talking about a weight that you can handle, that you know you're limited. You know which weights to use, Dave, because you're, you know, well-versed. Right. Well, I was still shit. doing full range of motion and, and, right. and, and, and right. good form, and, squeezing, absolutely. 
Right. And you're not stopping a set that you've only got five, six reps from. That's not enough. Mike Mentzer used to say to King of heavy duty, and I get again, I could show you pictures of me and him in my gym here where I live. Mike Mentzer used to say, the set didn't begin until you've completed at least eight clean reps and, and, and you start feeling that burn. Then you continue on. That's what Mike Mentz used to say. But these guys here, when they hear you saying go heavy, they're going to go today and say, I'm going to pull the 100-pound dumbbells off the rack. Yeah. I need you to help me. Jump. No, you're right. And, you're right. Me. and, and that, that's wrong. From, from the moment they get go, after the third rep, they can't even do it anymore. They have their friends spotting them and doing that yeah. shit, and they believe that that's going to make muscle. That's not heavy I, I learned a long time ago or early on in my training that if you don't feel the muscle you're training working, right, you're not build, you're not doing anything. Just because yeah, you're doing skull crushes, if you don't feel them in your triceps, then you're wasting your time. And let me say one thing about Dorian Yates. Dorian Yates, at tour, especially towards the end of his career, got totally into working out on machines. He'd squatted on a squat rack, right. and then he stopped doing that. Okay, he relied on like leg press. He fucking benched on a on a on a, on a Smith machine, a like rack. the hammer machines. Yes, I meant um, Smith. I meant I didn't mean a squat rack. I mean, I'm sorry, I meant the Smith, Smith machine. machine. He squatted on a Smith machine. He benched on a Smith Smith machine, and he used hammer all the time right. because he liked the machines. He liked the control of the machines. There's less of a chance of getting injured. Plus, he had a guy that spotted him on every rep of every set. Would stay, that's what the guy was like his training partner. But the guy, Leroy, he wouldn't Leroy do Davis, sport. yeah, huh? Leroy, Leroy Davis, right? And it, but the, it would be, it wouldn't be you go, I go. It would be you. Let me spot you through the whole workout, and then he train. You understand? Yeah. So I'm explaining. You and I, we all know that. I, you know, we worked with Dorian. I know Dorian. We, we all know that, but I'm trying to explain that, that the kids out there watching this, they believe in their heads that by going heavy, Dave Palumbo said, dude, no, no, Dave's right. Bro, Dave's right. We got we to gotta start training heavier. If you can't handle the weights, you have no business touching. Well, everyone's heavy is, 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 is a different uh, type of heavy because you got to figure what works for you. When I watch Akeem Williams squat seven plates on each side... It looks like he's squatting 135. He's got full range of motion. He's right. got control of the movement. That's right. why his legs are so big, you know? That's what I said about, about fucking Ronnie Coleman. Yeah. You see him fucking T-bar rowing 450, okay? He, but he does it clean, and he does fucking 12, 14 Are you kidding me? He's at the worst form in the world, Ronnie no, Coleman. What I mean is he full range. You know he's full I mean? range of motion, though. He's, he's full doing. range of motion. Yeah, he, he's he does full range, full range. Motion, but his form was terrible. But li No, he That's has a rhythm. That's probably why he's injured today. Not <laughs> yeah. Oh, he has a rhythm. He has a rhythm. Dude, I used to do fucking... Uh, when I used to do cable crossovers in Gold's Gym back in the day, I used to do it a lot with Samir Banu. And he would he would be doing the fucking things, and the cable crossovers would lift him off. He'd be jumping like this. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, so I started doing that shit. You know? I remember doing fucking press downs, V-bar press downs. And I was doing shit like this. And I, I learned it from Samir and fucking uh, Mike Christian was training somebody right next to me. And he and he's doing like, you know, helping a guy with lap pull downs. And he looks at me while, you know, while he's helping the guy. And as soon as the guy puts the bar up and I stop, he goes to me, what the fuck are you doing? What are you doing? And I'm fucking, I don't know, but Samir was doing that shit and showing me. So I did it. The, but there, realistically, there's you know a part, I mean? there's a part in that interview uh, that, that Duckman's got. He's like, the secret is genetics. You can't pick play, your parents. Play more, play more of that. Genetics. Of Big Rammy. He calls him Rammy. Rammy. Big Rammy. Rammy. Great genetics. That's going to be the future of the sport. Genetics. <laughs> play, play, keep play, playing. Play, he, play another, oh, play play another he, bike. He talks Please. about the vaccine. Play. Continue where we were going, uh, Tyler. <laughs> the, the vaccine is pretty interesting. Part. Anti -start a vaccine. Is that a vaccine? He's very knowledgeable, Steve. So I enjoy listening to him, even though it's it's funny. He is a smart guy. Yeah, I, very you know, smart. Very that. smart. Who is a muscle wasting <clears throat> disease that happens with age, and it lowers strength. And muscle hypertrophy, and it causes this is talking about sarcopenia in old people. And 
It's, it's starting to put me to sleep. It's a major George Chiliados can't keep uh, his eyes open. Look. Mortality with the elderly and death. But in order to prevent that, we know weight training is effective against preventing sarcopenia. So it's important to start early when you're young, especially in middle age. And as you get older, you shouldn't wait. Why is Blackman uh, relocated like, to a little oh, square in the corner of the page? For instance, <laughs> I don't understand. It. He sounds like that okay, paint Regeneron off uh, has you. become uh, well known in the past year or so during COVID. They're responsible for the monoclonal antibody cocktail. Hmm. That You've heard of that one, Ron, right? Monoclonal antibody cocktail. You never heard of that of morning in Journal of uh, 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 Yes, it's a monoclonal. These antibodies are the most promising area of treatment outside of the vaccines uh, moving forward. In fact, I, I get my vaccine hmm. next month for the first time. Oh, George I'm is totally 67, is. so. I, He's doing the vaccine. George already got his. <laughs> I'm getting it tomorrow, my second dose. Which, which did? Uh, Pfizer. Which, Oh, you got the Pfizer. I recommend the uh, the mRNA over the DNA vaccine. Yeah, because Blackman because, recommends uh, it because he's a virologist and knows all about it. You know, the Johnson and Johnson isn't People available died. yet, and AstraZeneca are here. Those are DNA-based vaccines. J&J will be one dose. One dose, but uh, we already know because of the variant, the South African variant, that <laughs> so J&J has got it. <laughs> start producing a booster shot. So eventually, if you take the J&J, even though it's one Johnson shot, Johnson you're still going to have to sure. get a booster. J &J. And they're planning on that. They're working on it. Okay. Is the best. You got to remember that when you freeze these vaccines, you need to freeze the mRNA vaccine because they're very unstable. Hmm. If you want hmm. more shelf life, then you the DNA vaccines uh, are more effective for that. And that's why Johnson Johnson has gone that direction because you only have to refrigerate it. Ron looks like he's been, he's been hit with a uh, baseball bat. Need a booster, probably. Um, <laughs> well, you can tell he's ready to pull. His uh, shoulders are, are, are slumped forward. That's when you need to relax mode. The thing with the uh, mRNA, Johnson Johnson and Moderna, I mean, the Moderna and the Pfizer is that it doesn't get in to the nucleus of the cell. No, no. It doesn't attach itself. To the DNA, no. <laughs> okay. The DNA vaccine, okay, which Johnson Johnson, AstraZeneca, okay, it attaches. Can they try to develop it so it doesn't? But there's still some unknown, uh, unknown, you know, uh, long-term safety of these DNA. So I, I look. Would I take the Johnson Johnson? Of course. Would I take the AstraZeneca? Of course I would if it was available. They're all, I believe, safe. But if if I had a choice of one or the other, of course, I would go with the uh, mRNA, which is the Pfizer and Moderna, and that's what I would take. But uh, <laughs> Ron's back face to the, is uh, priceless. <laughs> sarcopenic drugs of the future <laughs> is Regeneron, who's doing this monoclonal antibody that uh, President hmm. Trump received early in his COVID uh, illness. Uh, they are working on. Uh, Myostatin inhibitor do monoclonal do I knew myostatin antibodies. was coming, John. I knew it. Just think. Now, they're in phase two right now <laughs> drug development and drug trials. They're, next year, they're going, into, they're going into phase three. Okay. So I believe this Regeneron, myostatin, we know that if you could inhibit myostatin, you could, it has tremendous effects on, in animals and uh, and in humans that it's an inhibitor of muscle hypertrophy and muscle growth. If you could uh, inhibit myostatin, you could increase hypertrophy. So there are pharmaceutical, other yeah, pharmaceuticals. I was just, it was getting to the punchline here. Pharmaceutical uh, companies, Novartis is working on uh, a myostatin uh, yeah, inhibitor. I knew Blackman was gonna bring it back to myostatin. I should have said it even before listening to it. <laughs> What does myostat have to do with the freaking uh, also the COVID an area, treatment? area of drug development? First of all, uh, AstraZeneca is the best one. Scientist, I know scientists, real scientists. They'll tell you why because it has a dead piece of the actual virus in it, and that's the way they did it for polio and everything else. And that it, it will not regrow itself. People get paranoid about that, but you don't understand something. To you guys, uh, you know, and I see it. 
it, it, you know, that's funny watching that. But to, I've seen guys that even read the comments like you just you're going to make people fast forward past this because nobody like we're all sitting there going, OK, because we know him. You know what I'm saying? We know Steve, yeah. but most people find that that right there. Like, dude, what's what, what are you watching? What are you wasting time? With? That's that's, that's why I said it. I said it as a joke, but I was really serious. He should have come on our show. I would have interviewed him. It would have been the greatest interview of all time because I know what to ask him. I know. I know every little shtick about him. John and I could have interviewed him better than anyone. They let him ramble on about monoclonal antibodies. No one cares about it. Only I, I actually found it interesting what he was talking about, but no one else is, gives a crap. Tulianos was falling but he, asleep. But he, 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 but he doesn't, he confuses his facts yes, though. Yes, I know. That's the problem. Well, the thing is that, again, nobody else wants, nobody else finds this interesting. It's almost like when you tell a joke that nobody else gets, but it's be, between us guys, we know it. Like it's an inside joke, you know what I'm saying? So when they watch this shit, they don't find they're like even Look, Tyler's like, dude. I, I, I didn't watch Tyler's the. Tyler's like, what are we watching here? You know? I didn't watch the whole like, interview, but I would have asked him about Dennis Wolf. You know why? Because he is the one who told me about Dennis Wolf before anyone knew about Dennis Wolf. He said this guy's going to be a star. I said, Steve, who the freak is he? I'm telling, I'm telling you, Dennis Wolf. He was all over Dennis Wolf. Whether he like, you know, whatever he glutes, he wanted to look at it. He knew that Dennis Wolf was going to be a star, and he got him signed on real early. You remember that, John? Yeah, he did. He did. Hey, he did the same with me. He was going, dude. I signed Dennis Wolf. Oh, you're going to love this guy. <laughs> and I go, who's Dennis Wolf? The comedian? I thought it was a comedian. Yeah. I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> he knew, like, but like that. that's the stuff that I want to, that, that that would be interesting because he he was good at at picking out like talent and and coming up with headlines and stuff like that. That's people want to hear that story. I don't want to hear about it. But he also he also knows his shit. That yeah. fucking guy sits and reads all yeah, day, yeah. all fucking night. Yeah, but Greg, he 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 conflates different facts with. Yeah, he just he get whatever the latest study no, is. I that's know what, what you're saying. Do you remember the argument we had over omega threes? Oh my god! Back, back in the day, he was totally fucking... wrong. He was completely wrong. Yeah. But he had all these facts. But he was you know completely what? wrong. And he's wrong about the sarcopenia drugs. It's not hypertrophy. It's hyperplasia. <laughs> that, that's, it, he, he's just wrong. But listen, <laughs> I understand that. But it's conflicting fucking information. You know why? Because I think he overreads. Yeah, he yeah, you know, yeah. Listen, <laughs> because he has no opinion. Yeah. He, no, has he, no, over, he has he, no opinion. He only <laughs> parrots. What he reads, he's like a tape recorder. Oh, I understand, he played, but he, plays it, he gets takes it in, he plays it back. He, he, there's no, there's no calculation going. I, un, I understand that, I, you know. Listen, but he is a very smart guy. But the problem is, is that when you read, I mean, how many times I used to read articles cooking chicken with the skin on. That's, well, that's, that's the headline. He's a tape and recorder. And then the next thing you know, no, you got to cook the skin. No, it's got to be skinless. You know, you hear different fucking. Just He's the master in that, Greg. He was the ma member to olive oil. Olive oil's no good. But There's no such thing as real so olive. Like, no olive oil. Right. And olive oil comes back. Olive oil's good for you. Yeah, I got you come to lunch and go to the Greek place. You got a bottle of olive oil. He keeps it for me. It's just for me. It's extra virgin, unfiltered, all organic. You're gonna love it. <laughs> I remember the olive oil <laughs> shit. I want the deli. He gives it. He takes the olive oil. He fucking pours it all over like this, like a fucking gallon. And he goes, "Yeah, get in." He did it with the garlic. He did it with the olive oil. He did it with the fucking the keto diet, the, the Mediterranean diet, whatever is in vogue. That's that's what it does. He's, he has zero zero comprehension of any of this stuff. No, I think that you know. I mean, I, I, listen, I like Steve. I, I think that he is a very knowledgeable guy. He's, he used to tell me shit all the time. Like, you know what? You, like, they would go on hiking trips, him and his friends, and they would take Viagras. And I'd be like, what for? You know, I'm thinking, like, you know, would he get a Woody? Or what's the, <laughs> what is that all about? Yeah. But he said, you know, about how, the, you know, the, the nitric oxide part. Yeah, I mean, we're going way back. Oxide. Yeah, yeah, it only I mean, increases nitric oxide in your penis. That's the only problem, so. <laughs> It's like these body bulls no, that take it before going on stage. Systemic. He thinks it's systemic. Yeah. He's nuts. 
Yeah. He's, yeah. Vino Viagra. <laughs> Let's not forget that. No, but you know how like all these nitrous oxide. <laughs> Remember the wa- red Vino, wine Vino. was going to be wine. fruited to gods. They fruited to gods. Vino Viagra. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to that? Well, that that whole book that was going to come. No, I just all I'm trying to do is I'm not. I'm just sitting here. I'm just saying. Greg must be I looking think, for a contract. Uh, Greg, John. you must be looking for so. a contract because this guy's a fucking quack. <laughs> no, and there's I, nothing I, you can I, say. There's for nothing contract. you can say that's going to make anybody believe he's intelligent, he's this, he's that. He's a tape recorder. That's all he is. In I'm not, and out. He's got no comprehension of this whatsoever. Yeah. It's my, now I'm going to recommend, I'm going to recommend, not the J&J. and I'm going to recommend the Aster. Who the fuck are you to recommend what fucking antiviral vaccine? You, know, you don't know shit about viruses. And then, but no, I recommend, I recommend Astra because of the DNA. Yeah, and that's why that's because I'm sure you read the journal, the, jur- the, the journal of uh, Hypoxic Training and Sarcopenia National uh, Anti Prostate Journal of the Americas. That, yeah, this morning a new study came out. That, that's all you get from him. You're actually giving hard. me the, but that's just the same shit you're saying right now is what the scientists for fucking Biden are saying. Hank hey, Gary. Hank hey, Gary just died. Hank hey, Gary took the. Took the vaccine and died. Died a week and a half later. That's wow. right. You're not telling you people are dying. It doesn't work. You don't you need. No, that's a, look, don't don't the spread that. that we know. One, I think it's gonna no, work. for most it people, work. it's gonna work. There's gonna be people with adverse reactions. If Listen, what, after what if we told? What if we? Right afterwards. It's not a vaccine. Hey, anymore. Lenny. You can't Lenny. have a vaccine. Listen, these vaccines. They have no human trials, Dave. Lenny, no Lenny, Lenny, let's do. There's no bit you have to have like the polio vaccine. All them have a so dead piece of the actual virus. Big Lenny, I'm gonna no sign you to a contract. I'm gonna make you a big star. Have a little bread. You, you know need, what? You need You're, some next tryptophan. Week, next week we're gonna this hear Chris Valentino signs contract. With uh, yes. <laughs> No, it's not the case. Steve Blackman welcomes back Red Valentino with open arms. After he lost in court. After he lost and in court. Every he beats and him in court for not paying him. And there's <laughs> Valentino with a wig on his head and in his lap like this. No. At, least, at least Steve paid for it. Look, at least he let us do what we wanted to do I'm all not, the time. I mean, we had, not, listen, think Steve, about that. He said we stole the credit card, though, even though I didn't have a credit card. Yeah. Well, listen. Right. Dave, was, have we, had we Steve, Steve not done years. We Gun stole the credit card. Did you know that, George? Online. I stole the credit card here. somehow, I didn't, even though I didn't have a Listen, copy. I was with Steve card. for 15 years. Is We had our differences. We had our arguments and stuff. Differences? You took them to fucking court because <laughs> he didn't pay you. That's <laughs> not a difference. <laughs> he, he tried to stop me from when after I get fired for getting on a plane, but he apologized for that. I know he wasn't. <laughs> he apologized. <laughs> So, 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 Greg, if I come up and smack you in the head with a fucking baseball bat, and then I say, oh, oh, I didn't mean that. I apologize. I apologize. I, him and I had a big argument, and we, we you know, now it's squashed. It, that was a Dina. He let a Dina. He let a retard run a ship over there. Remember fucking he let, Adina? fucking he let Greenberg, Goldberg, Iceberg, whatever his name was, Ginsburg. <laughs> he let he let him d- d- control the whole fucking company with the fucking bullshit rumors he was starting. He got his daughter Jenny so fucking upset that Dave and I were going to steal the company and <laughs> screw her out of her inheritance. They, it, it, was, it was like a fucking volcano erupted. Who's that? Adam Ginsburg. Yeah. Oh shit! I, I I don't know about that. But the thing <sighs> is, we got on. He when he when he fired me, I I, I was like, oh, I whatever. But then when I went to, you know, I I making you're making a living. The next day you're making nothing. I had to grab on a plane like right that? away so I can right. get them. You went like that, like you said. Just call you up one day and says I can't. No, he text message. We got a phone call. We got a phone yeah. Call. I got a phone call at least. Yeah. I remember I got, the phone, George. George, after 18 years, 18 years, I get a phone call. Yeah, I decided to go in another direction. <laughs> I got a meeting. I'll call you later. That's what do you mean? After, that's, that's, that that's when he, got, he got pissed off at Dave because he didn't get pissed off at you because you started a species and he wanted to be part of the body. Who knows? Way, it's way more involved than that. Yeah, but, the, so, yeah, but what it was with me was is that Adina I still want to interview him. Like, I still would love I, to interview him. Yeah, Adina, well, did, Adina didn't like me. 
And Odina was his writing man. So she would tell him, you know what? I would do a serious but interview too with him. Valentino's column, okay, you know, because, you know, my column was fucking banging in there. And you guys know that, yeah. right? Yeah, everyone loved and, it. And he, and he fucking, he, she convinced him all that cursing and foul language and all that stuff that he talks about. I think we need to go in a new direction. You know, she hit him with that. And she took over the magazine. She basically is the one. I knew it was coming because of her. Because of her. And there's a classic case of me helping her. She was his Victor Martinez uh, and brought her to, uh, to muscular development. But I'm the one. She started going on your boards, on the RX boards. And then she came to the fucking uh, MD barbecue, was crying to me how Steve Blackman treated her like shit. That's why she went to the MD boards. So I said to her, hold on. And I introduced her to Steve. And I said, Steve, she said you were very upset. You know, you weren't nice to her. So Steve said, oh, geez, I'm really sorry. I don't remember. And then they, you know, she went back to the boards, uh, uh, AMD boards. And then all of a sudden on there, she got, you know, moderator shit. No, you know what, Greg? No one, no, no one cares, Greg. No one cares. <laughs> the truth is that Big Lenny, I, I got to get you some serotonin. I think you should have some bread. John, get him, get him a loaf of bread. Sir, he needs some serotonin. Wait, Lenny, it'll, I, Lenny always it'll, shit. It'll, I'm so sorry. Make, it'll make him feel better. You're Natural antidepressant. I think shit, Steve yeah, got there with my brother Chuck. My brother charged for the, for the uh, massages at, at, in Vegas at the Olympia. You got the tea bag. Yeah, I, I got accused of stealing the credit card that, I, that there was no credit card. But you and Mr. <laughs> you and your brother were getting massages <laughs> at, at the uh, at the hotel. Yeah, I'm, I I got fucking stuck paying his eight hundred dollars stripper bill one night at the fucking club because he goes, at least counts my money. I can't. So he, he he falls in love with this fucking stripper. Right? She's supposed to for eight hundred dollars in lap dances. Uh, I, 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 <laughs> yeah, let's not it. Let's. His money. But the truth he is, I'm in love with this girl. She's blonde and has hair like this short. He goes, she looks like Cher. Doesn't she look like Cher? I go, Steve, she doesn't anything fucking like Cher, and in no way, shape, oh, or form. Yeah, she looks like Cher. Eight hundred bucks later, I'm fucking paying this stripper. <laughs> Because the least counts as money. Uh -oh. I don't know. I didn't have any problems with him until Adina came in. You know what I mean? And she started all that holy roller shit with her bullshit. You know what I mean? Oh, he curses. That's what I get for fucking... Hey, we, we didn't have any trouble until Zuckerberg started getting afraid for his job. I don't know. All the fans love you. I, you know, I, I the whole thing... <laughs> I love yeah. laughing about this stuff. It's very funny, actually, to be honest with you. But Yeah, but you know what it is? We're, it's almost like an inside joke with us, but the people watching this show are like, they really should get over that that stuff. Because I read the comments, and they're like, Yeah, oh, but there's, there's like five people that. who write that, and the rest of people but think it's funny. Yeah, but I'm saying that they don't understand what we're talking Because we worked there. I worked there 15 fucking years for the guy. I know, you know, back and forth, we know the shit. You know what I mean? We know yeah. a lot of the behind scenes, what's going on, and all that stuff. They don't understand. They, you know... They don't understand like what we're saying. I think you know. We just like oh, the break. We blast. let's I mean, let's we, face it. I mean, it was fun. Let's it was face like it. We're ball breakers. That's what we do. We break balls. Okay. Right. We're we ball. all are. I, yeah. I I really have no n negative animosity towards him or anyone else. We, if we could start do. that up again, <laughs> we'd get big money on there. Okay. We would do good. We get big money. I forgive there. everyone. I, I forgive negative. everyone. But I like. But I at the same time like to break balls because that's. It. I think my father taught me, and I've said this a million times, you got to find the absurdity in life. Because if you don't find the absurdity, you take everything seriously, it gnaws away at your fucking guts inside and, and eats your life. So you can't do that. You find the absurdity, you laugh at it, and it is what it is. You know, who gives a crap? Listen, I, absolutely. And I was upset with him for a while, but then... But you know what, I find that he's like a parody almost of himself, isn't he? Yeah, but he, he came to me and he apologized and he was sincere. He only it. apologized to you because he wants to use you so that ah, we can get hits on I, 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 MD. Right? Greg's that's that. the I, only re I, Greg, that's the only reason. Yes. Leckman only uses people that he can benefit from. He, if he thinks he's going to benefit from you, you're his best friend. You're getting two steaks. You're getting your shoulders rubbed. I got the steaks. You're gonna get, him, you're gonna get everything handed to you, and then when he's done with you, if you're lucky, you get a phone call. If not, you get a fucking text. 
I get it. Nothing coming. But I just want. I want. No, no. I'm not the kind of guy. I don't hold grudges. You know what I mean? It's a different story if you fuck me really bad. But he got. He he took it right back right away. He even fucking. He did a lot. You know, he did a lot. He was he was good for me. You know what I mean? And and he apologized. He he wanted to use you. But he stood. You know, listen. He still today. He'll text me. We'll text uh, on holidays. All of a sudden on Thanksgiving or something. uh, He'll say, "Hey, Greg, after you know Thanksgiving." So you know, I mean, I I'm good with that. I don't, I can't. I'm not. Well, the good. I'm glad you're good with it. He didn't <laughs> fuck you over as bad as he fucked me. It would be no well, I'm, not, I'm hey. glad you're good with it. You gotta I'm remember, Dave, Greg. You gotta remember, Greg, John was like no part of his family. Develop. Like John would be God. invited to like Aspen and stuff like that. Develop. With Dave, John, and Greg, that was a tri- trifecta. You and the three amigos. Without you guys, muscular development would have never ever even been here now We're and it's not and it's not the same it's never been the no, same there's no pizzazz there's no like that there's no I, I you know passion. there's no like huh you know we all brought something in look, you know yeah crazy. you know what it's it's a mate john, look listen john i gotta be honest with you i stuck when when you guys uh got fired i even one time wrote that i thought john romano was the best uh uh, writer in the sport and all, you know, I said that you, you know, I, my, my, and he actually got mad at me for it, you know, yeah. and we said, I said to him, but, but, you know, you know me, I tell, I you know, say Greg, you know what the, fun. you know what the bottom line is? I got you, me, John, Mr. G, Big Lenny, Jimmy the Bull, we're all together in one place. So after all is said and done, you know, we wound up in the right place and we're in a place where we have the freedom to say what we want and we, you know, whether people want to hear it or not, that's that's fine. Maybe we're a bunch of old fucks now. No one cares about, but <laughs> at least no, we have a forum friend. to talk about it's it. It's a great motivational story, Dave. Yeah. How, how you, how one day you're, we're all out of a job, you know, you're out of a job. And then the, the very next day you start RX muscle. Yeah. The very next day. Well, two, maybe two well, wait, days Wait, let later. me ask you a question. Yeah, right? John and I, yeah, John and I. I didn't have I... something to go back to. I didn't have something to fall on. You guys did, but let me ask you a question, Dave. If yeah. he said to you tomorrow, uh, and I'm asking you, Dave, seriously, what? if you bumped in him and he said to you, Dave, listen, I'm sorry about everything that happened, with no hard feelings, and he sticks his hand out to shake your hand, would you do it? Yeah, of course I would, because I don't, I don't hold the grudge against anyone. I know John does, but I don't hold the grudge. I would actually, like okay. I said, sit down and have dinner with him. and, and, and Okay, so... I don't have a problem with him. He at least has a problem with us because... We, we break his balls a lot on the show, but I don't have, a, I mean, I learned a lot from him. And, I, and like I said, he, if, he, if he sat down and said, you know, I made a bad decision. You know what? Can we put this behind us? I would be the first person to say, come on the show. I'll interview you with John. And, we'll, and we would talk about but all you the- know what? I would, I, would, I would totally accept that. Yes. If he sincerely apologized- right. For being such a fucking prick dipshit, yeah. then then and and all, and how he treated me. If he apologized that sincerely, yeah. apologized for it. Yeah. I fucking stuck him for a million bucks at VPX. I don't. I'm 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 okay with the financial end of it at this point. But if <laughs> Wait, he legitimately, like- legitimately and sincerely apologized. I'd be right with Dave and and, and have him on the show and yeah. interview him. Right, but yeah. how come you guys don't understand that he apologized to me? He said, it, look, he even said, Greg, it was a huge mistake. I should never have listened to other people. Well, why didn't he do that to us? Yeah. I don't know. I, you know why? Because you guys may be still making fun of him. We, so yeah, yeah, yeah. we break his balls all the time. We break his balls all the time. That's why I don't break his balls. If, 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 he, if he wanted that to stop, all he'd have to do is fucking fall on his sword for us. Yeah. I could, listen, I could probably talk to him and see if I could get him to come. I don't know. You know what I mean? I, well, t- tell him to make a doll. Make him a, a Dave doll, a John Romano doll. Yeah, there you go. Have, it would, tell him Mr. G will make yeah. him a fucking cookie. Hey, it, would be, it would be the number one interview on, on, on YouTube uh, bodybuilding channels of all time. If Blackman came on the channel and, and interviewed with us, number well, one. Dave, you, that was your primary means of the income. Right, you you make it. You you had, look. Uh, Blackman uh, paid us all well. No one will. No one would. I, I don't no, think I'm John saying, would argue. I wouldn't argue. While we were working there, we got paid well, and I appreciate that. And he gave me an opportunity when when right after I got out of jail. So, you know. But I gave I gave him my soul. You know, over there, I gave no, him everything. No, you worked like fifteen, eighteen hours. I days, worked. So like, yeah, I stayed in the office extra. I did whatever he asked me to do because I I believe when you when you commit to someone, I was committed. And the truth is that I. 
I didn't agree with everything he did, but I, I, I respected his authority because he was the owner and I did what he asked me. If he called me up at three, two in the morning and say, ah, we need a Victor Martinez thing. I, I put the Victor Martinez. I stayed up till three in the morning doing it. I didn't care. I got him. I understood him and what his passion was and how crazy he was with what he wanted to do. So I embraced that because I respected it and the work ethic involved. And I know John did too. So whatever he asked to do, I never argued with him. And that's why I, I probably was the only person who really was able to work for him in a sense because I did what he asked, but I also challenged him in a way that to make his decision making better. You know, we we debated, yeah, the, we, we the went back and is, forth. Though Dave, is yeah. that his ego was so fucking huge well, that you that when you did challenge him, it was like, oh my god, the yellow pads and the red pens came out. Yeah, and he, you know, just researching and look. The, the carb wars, the fucking of uh, the omega three thing that we had. Yeah, all, it was all it was all him trying to exercise his authority as the know it all of everything yeah. when he doesn't. Yeah, and, and but he, he had guys going in his ears. You understand? That's what. But you know what, Greg? I guarantee you. I don't know if he'll admit it. When I would hang out at the office with him, or whatever it was, two days a week or whatever, I'd come in there because I couldn't go in there more than that because I wouldn't get any work done because we would talk too much the whole time. I know. I he, seen you in there. I shit he, in your bathroom yeah, downstairs. He, <laughs> he probably <laughs> with, with that, your own toilet paper in your sock, Greg. I guarantee you. Always. He probably loved those days more than anything because we would hang out. We would go to the eat dinner after we would. And I know, John, you did that with yes. him a lot of times in the office, too, when you were years before that, that yeah. he loved that stuff. And so, you know what? He kind of lost that because he didn't have someone who he could, you know, relate to and talk you know, about his studies that, with. A very good, there's a very good point. I want to punctuate it with this for, for part of what you say. I wouldn't or whatever you think I'm angry. Yeah. The reason I am has got nothing to do with the money or any of it. What it's got to do with is that he betrayed our friendship tremendously. And, you know, he was like, you're my brother. I used to stay at his house. I was right. friends with his kids, his wife. I went to Aspen, his house out there. I, I went to dinner. I went so many times. I was like part of the family. And he fucked me. He right. stabbed me in the fucking back. Right. And right. so, you know, you do that to somebody. There's no coming back from that. Right. They're just busy. So if he wants to apologize or whatever, yeah, that's fine. But he's never going to undo it. He's never going to bring back the way it was in the old days. And, you know, he, he's he's better off just drifting off into the sunset, confusing his facts and, you know, putting people to sleep than, than, than anything else because he's out of touch. Yeah. Listen, in my case, he took me out of the gutter. I was shit. He gave me that column. You know what I mean? Uh, he did good things so for all of us. There's yeah. no question about it. And he took but, but, but the, in the like end, that. in the end, is when he showed his true colors. Yeah. And but that, the, you got I an think, apology. That's great. Dave and I have not. And as far as I'm concerned, Dave and I did a tremendous amount of work. I was the senior editor of the magazine. I, I had know, no responsibility to the website whatsoever. Yet I worked with Dave like yeah. this, yeah. hand in hand. We traveled, we did here, we did this, we did built the I know, I was there with you guys. I worked way beyond my scope. We didn't even get a fucking Christmas bonus that year because yeah, my <laughs> bottom line, my bottom line projections didn't equal my top line. All this bullshit. He, he is completely an opportunist out for himself. He doesn't give a fuck about anybody who works for him. He only wants to use them until they're useless, and then he moves on. So you had a different experience with him, Greg. God bless you. I know no, I mean, callers. Listen, he, in the end, I got screwed, but he apologized to me for it. I know who did it. I, I knew it was coming. We had no problems, him and I. Yeah, like, you know he what, Greg? He, he's blaming on other people. He should. He's the owner of the thing. He should have taken. He has to take responsibility for all the decisions that was made. And that's the end. I, you listen, know what the truth is? Exactly. 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 Man, forever. I agree. All he you. had to do. Forever. All he had to do. And, and this this is this forever. shows how badly this shows how badly he shot himself in the foot. All he had to do was call Dave and me into the office one day and say, look, guys, this is getting out of hand. I got I got Ginsburg over here telling me you're going to take over the company. Right. Just level with me. Right. OK, but we want to fire it all out. Now, he you know what he got? Him. Everything, everything that RX muscle became would have been his. Right. Would have been his. Double. So, because and you know what the problem is? Because I'm, I'm so loyal, I never would have left. 
You know, I mean, even if dude, he fired he Ginsburg as well, right after you, he Ginsburg went. You know what I mean? Well, Ginsburg had to make haunted houses. That's why. That's why. You know, he was, that was his. Yeah, passion. well, dude, that's all he was doing. Is he was doing Ginsburg that. caused all this fucking trouble. <laughs> Didn't you almost kill him at a, a meeting time? What? That's what happened to John. Hold on. I think John, didn't, if I remember correctly, didn't you like get, almost like go to fists with him? Yeah, I wrote him this letter, this really scathing letter about how you fucked us all over <laughs> and, you know, all of the crap we got to put up with because of you being such a fucking weirdo and, and you don't appreciate any of that shit. Do you know how many people on a weekly basis would call me, why isn't Steve paying me? Well, how, how, come, I, how come I'm not getting my check? And now let me run it down for you. And then I call the office. Then the checks are on his desk. Well, why aren't you signing them? Yeah, you know, I, and, and, I used to say that be, all the time too. I know. I used all to. of the fucking accusations of him being gay and this and that. I fucking stood up for him. I defended him all yeah. the time. The whole I was a loyal soldier, and he fucking kicked me in the teeth. So me too. Oh. Let me tell you something. He okay. Whatever his deal was with paying other people, I get that. I know there was a lot of that trouble. But we all got our paychecks. I never fucking had a. Count. Are you kidding? Do you not, Dave? Greg, that I'm sorry. For years, I had to chase my fucking paycheck every fucking month. Where's my check? How come I haven't gotten? It took. It took. It took like six or seven years for me to get Wait. on a regular payment. <laughs> Listen, you would pay okay. Me. There were days I do it. I was supposed to get on the first of the month. Sometimes I get in on the eighth of the month. But I, you know. A lot of times I would just call, like, one, you know, what's her name in the office? Amanda, yeah, one of them. Checks are on his desk. How many times I have heard that the checks are on his desk? Oh, no, that is you, true. Greg, true. Greg. I know he had to sign. I have, so a, I have, like people, on, have, we have people who get paid. He had money. Office. We have people who work for Species and, and RX Muscle. The paycheck is sent by paychecks to them. I don't touch anything. It's automatically done. Every right. There's That's, no There's no deviation because I don't even touch the check. We call it into payroll. Right. They send out the check. That's right. the way it's That's what I don't understand. That's the one thing I didn't understand that they would always say. We call Amanda, one of them at the at the front desk, and they would say, "Well, you know, you're right. I gotta uh, let me just go. You know, let me call uh, over to Steve. He, they've been sitting on his desk. He's got to sign. I don't know why he has to sign every check. Because he grew but up with money. He grew up with money and didn't understand that that you actually couldn't. Couldn't fucking put gas in your car unless you got that, the money. You're right. That's exactly right. And, and, oh, and, and feed yourself. He doesn't know what it's like to, to start from nothing, from from no money at all. Because he got like 60 or $100 million, didn't he? Yes. The, from, the, you, know what, you, know what, the, you know what was learned from this whole experience? It's amazing how we went from early, you know, late 90s, early 2000s, the way it was, to now – where guys have to depend on them. People have to depend on themselves. If you don't do your social media, if you don't market yourself, no one's giving you a paycheck anymore. Very few people are out there actually employed. By pretty much most of our community makes their money on their own. And I, I think that's actually a better way to be. So the more you put into it, the more you get out of it, essentially. And really, the whole, the whole industry, the way it was set up with magazine contracts and supplement contracts and and people writing for magazines and photographers. Isn't it weird, John, how, like, what is it, 15 years later? And there's n absolutely no relevancy to that anymore. That's, that's, there's no, there's nothing there anymore. There's no. I think it's a good thing. It's a fucking good thing. Well, it's, it's different, that's A lot of that's those all. bodybuilders were leeches. They just fucking, they didn't put in any work. These guys don't even write their own columns, bro. Yeah, but he, you know that, but John. it's all right because they were, John, he was how many selling. how columns did you write but, for other guys? Yeah, but he sold magazines based on their, on their persona being in the magazine. So I know that, that but uh, you know, you yeah. gotta sit back and blow some cigar, you know, and well, somebody else has to write your column. Somebody reads oh, in a fucking I mean, magazine. You could hire column. someone else to do your social media. Column. Just like the transformation challenge when we were doing that. Yeah. And uh, Mr. G's name never got mentioned. Yeah, 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 yeah. they were embarrassing. <laughs> they thought, Joe Pietaro used to write Arnold's column at the end there. Oh, really? You know what I mean? And people think, oh, my God, look, Arnold's got a column. And it was Joe Peter. What I'm saying is these guys, they're fucking lazy fucking sods, man. It, uh, I agree with you, Dave. I think it's better now people put in their own work. Yeah. It is what it is, you know. But but that it's, it is true, though, that when we were all together, that magazine was fucking banging. 
Well, but you look, know what? That, we had that, that business model wouldn't work anymore now today. So you have to evolve. And I think what happens is when, you, when you're so successful with the way of doing things and then things change, a lot of people can't make that change. You know, we, what we've done with RX Muscle is that we've been able to evolve and change our business model and constantly mold ourselves and try to stay ahead of the curve in the sense of doing that the whole time. Yeah, I, we might not be the most popular YouTube channel out there because we don't appeal to, to the mainstream America. We, we appeal to the hardcore bodybuilders. But we've always been the most rele one of the most relevant out there. And I think that that's something to be proud of because we've been doing this since 2009 consistently. I don't think there's another website out there that's really done that and stayed on top of the curve. So, you know, I like to think that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to take suggestions from people. I'm willing to see what the latest trends are. And I'm willing to go out there, and I know John, you know, I, I know I'm speaking for him too. We're not afraid to, to create the new trends as well. And I know Mr. G is also very innovative, and Greg, you're not afraid to say what's on your mind. So whether people like this show or they think we're complaining, or, who cares? But it's entertaining because we're willing to talk about what really happens out in the world, and we're not sugarcoating it, and we're not trying to be politically correct. This is just the way it is. And you know what? I think that honesty is what, you know, attracts people to wanting to listen to shows like this. We show how friends stick together, Dave. Yeah, right. this absolutely. Is what life is. Friends, and friends stick together. If you call me 20 years later yeah. and said, hey, Mr. G, I got this. Yeah, where, where you want me, right, Dave? Right, right. And friends like I said, I always life, know man. That, that's I agree. the truth right there, Mr. Yep. G, because that's we're, we're the same group right here that was there right. 2009, 2008. Yeah. We're the uh -huh. same ones, and, okay? And the, so, yeah. the thing, but I, the thing we was, we were, we were utilizing the internet back then to create that buzz and that attraction. Those stages that we had set up with, with you and your brother, George, and, and at, the, at the Arnold Classic and the Olympia, where we attracted thousands of people. We had so much going on that the boots next to us were moving because they, they got pissed off. Remember that. They, they would remember, get pissed off. And, all, and we generated all that <laughs> online. That didn't come from the magazine. We weren't, no, we weren't, as Big Lenny would say, cookie cutter. And that's why I like including Lenny in the show, even though Lenny didn't say much at the show because we've been talking about it all the time. I this like Lenny problem. because Lenny's not afraid to say what's on his mind. You can criticize his physique. You can criticize anything you want about him. But you know what, Lenny? I like that you're not afraid to say what's on your mind. And that's why I want to include you. And I always include you every week and invite you on the show because I like to hear your thoughts. You know, I, I wish you'd, you'd chime in a little bit more, but I understand we were talking about Blackman a lot. And so you well, didn't really have Well, that was very interesting knowing the story behind it. I've yeah. been reading Muscle Development yeah. since Bob Hoffman ran it before right. Blackman bought it. So wow. I'm really involved the history. But you know, I, didn't know all that. I always I nurtured understand. characters. In other words, people who love training. And while they may not be Mr. Olympia, their passion for working out is, is absolutely, undeniably dedicated and insanely you know, loyal to the, to the hardcore cause. And that's you in a nutshell. And that, that's why I think you're, you're so great on shows like this because you could tell that you really love the sport, whether you know you're doing you know crazy stuff or not. I don't care; it doesn't matter. You love the sport of bodybuilding. Yeah, and thanks for having me a part of it. And I like hearing these stories, the crazy stories. You know, I loved the muscular development back in the day when the three of you were having their columns, and then when they got the anabolic doc, it sucked. <laughs> they removed you and put him on Thomas O'Connor, who's down here. That quack, it's pathetic. Well, you know what it is? It's, I think it's pers we were personality driven. That magazine, we all had a, a yeah. personality. Back then, even Lee Priest was with us yep. yeah. and everything. So you oh, throw that in. And it's ironic What's that it? Lee's with us now, too, right? We got the and whole Lee's crew. Lee. Isn't that funny? All of the people from back then, he, Blackman's got nobody but Ron Harris. All the Sikopes. Everybody the else is, is with us. Yeah. So I got a question. We're, we're all friends. We genuinely yes. like each other and, and shit. And the other thing is, is that we all come, we also bring a lot of John. We bring some old school stuff. I mean, we go back to an era that these young kids watching shows, they want to watch this fucking Momo on because he's got a YouTube channel and all he talks about is, uh, you know, plaque and plates and weights and this. And But we could talk about shit. They don't know what it's like to walk in a gym. Hey, Arnold, you know, there he's sitting right there. Or Franco Colombo's over here. Or one of these old school guys, the Barbarian Brothers. You, we, you know, we've seen shit and we could tell stories because we were part of that shit. 
So we bring a different era into this. You know what I'm saying? It's it's yeah. it's not the it's it's not the same. It, it plus we're characters, all of us, really. <laughs> I got a so, question. Hey, I got an off topic question. All right, I yeah. had this brought up to. You. Can you love a girl if you're not having sex? Wow. Yes, I love a girl I never even met. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you could, if if you're not having sex, you can love a girl because yeah, cause I'm, absolutely. Let, 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 let me ask a follow up question to that. Is there any reason? Is there any other reason to talk to a girl other than the fact that you want to fuck her? No, because for a guy, I, I had this argument. A guy for a guy, I had this, sex is love. If you're not having sex with me, I can't love that. That's when I have sex with you. That's no. I, I think no. I think you need to qualify this. When if a girl is at a gym or in a place, and a guy is has interest in talking to that person. It's not because he wants to be friends with her. It's because he wants to have sex with her. That's the difference. It doesn't yeah, mean that if you're in a relationship, you know, the that you have to have The only reason, se- the only reason right. a guy talks to a girl right. is to try to fuck her. Right, That's right. right, 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 right. Unless, then, you need, unless you need directions to the bridge or something. <laughs> <laughs> and the girl wants love no, but to have sex with us so she can get love. Listen, I see all these girls in the gym. They're twenty fucking years old and shit like that, and they're gorgeous, and they're hundred percent my type. And I fall in love with every one of them. But I'm not fucking them. I'm not fucking them in my head. Sometimes it's fucking you. You know, you could look at the menu even though you're on a diet. Yeah, That's but Greg, I mean. you don't want to strike up a conversation with them because you want a new fucking brownie recipe. Oh. You <laughs> what if your girl? What if, hold on. I got. What if your girl says she's not gonna have sex with you no more? Then I'm not gonna talk to her. <laughs> If my girlfriend says she's not gonna, yeah, my, I, I, yeah. My Sex girlfriend's my girlfriend's thirty three, Latina. I've been with her fucking fifteen something, fifteen sixteen years. You know what I mean? And she's still horny all the time. So I have sex all the time. I have sex pretty much. Uh, people don't believe me, but I'll go fourteen days in a row, and then we'll miss a day or two, and then we'll go another fourteen days, or I'll go three days, miss one, then go ten days, and get you know, dude, sex is forget yeah, about. Yeah, for guys, that's why guys get big. But that has nothing to do with, like, if my girlfriend got in a car accident and she could never have sex again, I'd still love her and I'd right. still be I, with yeah. her. Amen. That's a different yeah, that's, story. That's, right. that's a different one. She says- and when I see girls in the gym, I like talking with them. You know why? Because sometimes I'm an old, ugly guy. I look like fucking Uncle Fester on steroids <laughs> and shit. You know what I mean? But I got to be honest with you. I got the gift of gab and I say shit. Girls like personality. Just walking away knowing... You know what's funny? If I wanted to, and I really yes. want to push it. <laughs> and I'm happy with that. It's almost like hunting, and I'm fucking, I don't hunt, right? But I knew that if I was walking in the woods, and I see a deer, and I go like this, with my finger, I go, you know, if I was a hunter, and I wanted to kill it, that fucking deer would be dead. You know, but I'm not a hunter, so I would I don't Girls I like stories. Deer. Girls don't like watching Dude, listen. Guys watch porno. Girls. No, girls listen. Let me think. These fucking sorry fuck bodybuilders that jack like this, right? They think that they doing that all gonna get chicks. Chicks don't give two shits about that. Oh. I have a friend from Brooklyn who's 519 pounds <laughs> and he doesn't work out, so it's pure blubber. But he's a real Guido kid. Yeah, hey, what are you doing? Got the hair slicked like back. Tony you know? He wears track suits and shit. <laughs> 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 He wears sneakers. He Bring him on the show, Greg. Wait, listen. If he fucking went, he went like he's a New York Jet fan. So he'll wear like green tracksuit, right? And then <laughs> white sneakers. And then he'll take, when he's done, he'll take his sneakers out, wipe them off after wearing them today, the and put them back in a box. And I tell him, dude, you take care of those sneakers, but you'll let yourself get to 500 fucking pounds. <laughs> right? <laughs> Meanwhile, he gets more ass. He gets girls. Up. You know why? Because he's one of those guys with the rings on his finger. You know, hey, let me buy you. Come here, honey. Sit in. You know, got the personality and everything like that. Boom. What does he do with his story. stomach, Greg, when he's when he's uh, trying to have sex with these girls, though? He fucks them. I don't know how to fuck them. How does he get close enough to them? Because, you know, this. listen, there's fat bastards and a fat fuck. You know what I mean? He's more like a fat bastard. He'll get, you know, he'll get up there and he'll do whatever he's got to do. A fat fuck. I have another friend. It's a fat Can you fuck, imagine you know? 500 pounds on top of some poor girl, John? <laughs> oh, dude, let me tell you something. But you know what? You guys would love him, bro. You got the slick back hair, real yeah, guinea. Bring him on the show. Bring him on the show, yeah. Sure. Bring him on it. I want to find out some information. Dude, let Lenny, Lenny wants to ask him some questions. From Brooklyn, he fucks young girls. I tell him, what the, God bless you, bro. Lenny, Lenny what's the first thing you would ask him? 
How'd you get to be 500 pounds of fat? <laughs> <laughs> hey, maybe Big Lenny could train him. Send him out to Big Lenny. Lenny will get him in shape. At my heaviest, I was 452, but it's a lot of muscle there. Yeah. And yeah. I couldn't gain another. I wanted to weigh 500 pounds. Well, Mostly send him to Big Lenny's. Imagine him and Big Lenny training together and going to pick no, up my chicks. Friend, no, my friend couldn't do it. My friend couldn't do it. He no. couldn't lift a weight. He, he, He's not into that. He, yeah. But he's a lover. He sits yeah. there. Dude, if, you, if you're in a club and you're walking next to him like it's crowded and you're fucking, your foot like touched his sneaker. Oh, oh, Jesus Christ. You know. He'll <laughs> <laughs> walk over to the bar and he'll get a napkin. And then he'll go down there and he's fucking white. And I'm like, dude, you can't even see that. Dude, those are my fucking sneakers. Hey. We should have him teach him how to be a, how to be a guinea like him. Have him all teach us all like, guinea oh, lessons. Where from? The, guinea the lessons. Tahini, the yeah. guinea warm up suits, right? You know? <laughs> oh, dude, dude, he he, dude, he knows. Uh, what was I gonna say, Dave? He knows some of the girls you know. I think he knows Colette really well. Too. Oh, really? What's the guy's name? Yes. Chris. Chris Hustle. Oh, we we'll get him on the show. Let's get him Chris on. Chris Hustle. Chris Hustle. <laughs> he Hustle. Ask him if he wants to come on the show. He uh, he knows a lot of girls. You know, he used to he does all that muscle worship shit with them too. He ah. likes to wrestle them and stuff. Oh, oh boy! Remember, remember the guy Joel? I remember the guy Joel who used to work with Dave. Yeah, yeah I still. No, talk. but he's not. He's not like some pathetic dude. Dude, he's a typical guinea from the Brooklyn. You got to get him here. on the show. Right. We'll ask him about his fetish with women bodybuilders. He drives a fucking old Cadillac with his arm out the fucking window. And his Book him, book him, Greg. Book him. Does he he's have in his 50s. Cigarette too? Yeah, uh, no, not a cigarette, but he's in his 50s. He's got the hair. Probably back. smokes a cigar, I'm sure. Uh, a a real cuisine. <laughs> a real cuisine, you know what I'm saying? All right, yeah. book, book him for the show. Guys, I got other interviews to do today. I think we went like three hours already, so. <laughs> <laughs> I got to watch the rest of the Blackman interview. We'll, I'm sure we'll have plenty of clips to pull up uh, in the future. But um, anyway, I, I, right. I had a good time with you guys today. And that's really what this show is all about. It's about a good time. Hopefully, you guys out there, if you're having depression because of COVID or you, you, you don't have a job or whatever the case may be, hopefully, the show really cheers you up because that's really what we're trying to do. Put everyone in a good mood. And hopefully, you, you, you accept the show for what it is. We, we bitch and complain, but this is all for fun. No one's taking this stuff seriously. And like I said, I put it out there. If Steve Blackman wants to be interviewed by John and I, maybe apologize on the air to us, I'm willing to shake his hand and, and break bread with him and, and you know put this all in the past. So Me I'm too. putting it out there. Me too. Hey, you want to get John, cheered up right here, baby. There you go. And don't Mr. forget, Mr. yeah, Amino Vol. It's all done. I got to mix up the up. Also, also, I got my secrets to becoming a diet guru course online this weekend, Saturday the 9th of February. Is it the 9th or 6th? 6th of February. 9th or 6th? 6th of February, excuse me. February 6th, this Saturday. You can sign up at DavePalumbo.com. There's a link there. Um, it's my 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. all-day course. Learn all the secrets diet, supplementation, performance enhancing drugs. I go over everything. You don't have to have any any background on it. You just show up. You're going to get a 100 page manual that I wrote all my protocols in there. You guys will love it. I'm telling you this is one of the most popular courses. I give it four times a year. This one will be online. So it doesn't matter where you live in the world. You can take this course as long as you want to get up. And the great thing is it's recorded. So if you want to go back and rewatch it and at a later date, you can do that as well. All right, I'm going to wrap this. And at this. that course, Dave's going to give out free samples. Free sample. Only to you guys you get free samples. <laughs> <laughs> thank well, you guys, you guys once again. Lenny, thank you for joining us. You. Mr. G, uh, Greg, and of course, John. It was a fun day today. I'm Dave Palumbo for another installment of Palumbo. After Hours. We'll see you next week. I love you guys. I love you.